Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infinite Realities with me, Stuart Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow. And we welcome you to the first episode of our new year, and we hope that you've all had a very great new year. 2012 is going to be quite an interesting ride, and today we have a very wonderful guest who will be helping us to see what 2012 means and what it has in store, as well as many other things. Gary, the numbers guy. Gary, are you there? Yes, I am, and thank you for the nice introduction. And welcome to Infinite Realities. Uh, Gary, um, one of our listeners wanted to know what inspired you to become a numerologist. Um, well, we have to go back to the biggest event, at least in my generation's history, and that would be 9-11. And it took me a couple months to deprogram myself, but then I, I started to realize a few key facts. One thing stuck at me, and I, I just couldn't take it as a coincidence, the fact that 9-11 happened on the 11th. 9-11 is the 254th day of the year, 25411. The first plane to hit the World Trade Center that looks like an 11 side-by-side -side was Flight 11. There are 110 stories on each in uh, floors in the World Trade Center. Again, take out the 0 11. Uh, New York City 11 letters, the, the country they attacked in retaliation for 9-11. Afghanistan 11 letters, and they attacked Afghanistan 10-7-2001. Take out the 0 one seven two one. Again, you have 11. And that, to me told me there was you know I could go I can go on our show just talking about that in itself but that to me told me there it can't be a coincidence and then when I started researching history because one of my first loves was history and I started putting together the numerology and history it, it became very evident that the powers to be the elite the Illuminati whatever you want to call them were using numerology to plan their attacks and to prepare the world for a one world government that's fascinating. But now, what happened? I mean, did you just wake up that day and you started seeing all these 11s? Or what was the precursor to you even being able to recognize such uh, symbols and patterns and trends? Something must have happened prior to this. Well, for, well I was always into astrology. Uh, you know, even when I was uh, 10, 11 years old, for some reason, I liked the fact that I was a Capricorn. I didn't know why, but I just liked it. And, you know, over the years, I began studying the um, astrology. Then I started studying Chinese astrology. And then after I saw those 11s in 9-11 and, you know, being uh, susceptible to astrology, I thought, well, maybe there's something to this numerology stuff. And I started studying it very in-depthly. And, you know, w w if you just look at the biggest events in American history, uh, say the past uh, 20 years, Oklahoma City, that was the biggest domestic terrorist attack in, Oklahoma, in American history. That happened on 4-19-1995. Add up the numbers, 419-1995, add up to 38, 3 plus 8 equals 11. Now, the th thing about that is the first bomb in Oklahoma City went off at 9.02 a.m. Again, 9.02.11. And the day they executed Timothy McVeigh was June 11th. So, you know, you, you keep looking at certain things and it, 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 the patterns just keep coming at, at you. Uh, for instance, um, Wall Street, the, the crash on Wall Street that happened on 10.29.1929 that caused the Great Depression happened on the 29th, 2 plus 9 equals 11. Uh, Hurricane Katrina starts with the K. K is the 11th letter alphabet. That also happened on the 29th. So you you, cut, you keep looking at these things, and all of a sudden, you know, I I can't see how anyone can see perceive this type of stuff as being coincidental. Um, Al Qaeda, uh, you you know, Al Qaeda was created and founded on August 11th, uh, 1988. Founded on the 11th, and the two biggest attacks they're known for worldwide is 9-11 and what happened 911 days later in Madrid, Spain on 3-11. So you start looking at patterns and after a while, it can't be coincidental. That's pretty amazing. Oh, so in other words, these things just jump out at you. I mean, they not everybody out. sees it. Yeah, that's this. And oh, please, like, like for instance, I always tell people, don't fly on planes on the 11th or the 29th. Uh, that's when the majority or, or when any, any day adds up to an 11, like Oklahoma City. Those are the days where planes are most susceptible to get an accident. And on 11-11, I told people not to fly. And, and uh, the Mex I believe uh, the helicopter for one of the advisors of the Mexican president crashed. Uh, you know, there, there's so many stu stuff that goes into numbers. People just have to keep their have their eyes open. Oh, what about the Costa Concordia? Was there any 11s about that one? No, no. Uh, but I will tell you one thing. We're in the in, we're in the five universal year, 
2012 equals right. five. And um, fives tend to be accident prone. So accidents are bound to happen in 2012 on a much higher rate than in different years. I'm, if you're noticing when you're going to be driving in the freeway, there's going to be more accidents. That's just because that's the way five energy is. It's very um, out there. It, it, uh, it, it, five is basically a contradiction in itself because the only constant in the life is change. And that's what the five is all about, change. If you look at the number five, it's right in the middle between the one and the nine. And, it, and it, the shape of the five, it's very important to look at the shape of the numbers, too. The shape of the five is very open on both sides. Unlike any other number, it's open, meaning people who are five life sides are very open and very susceptible to numerology, astrology. I'm not saying they're the best at it, but it, it, every number has uh, energy around it. Um, give me an example. The one stands for male energy. Uh, athlete starts with A. A is the first letter alphabet. People who are one life path or born in the 10th, 1st, 10th, 19th, 28th, they're very argumentative. Argumentative starts with A again. Um, then you, then two is the number of female energy. If people have noticed, the world has got a lot more feminized since the year 2000 hit. A lot of people are asking why. Well, it's very simple because before we used to have the one being the predominant number in the calendar year cycle in the 17th, 18th, 1900s. Now with the two being the predominant number in the calendar year cycle, people are going to be more sensitive and more into, uh, uh, how can I put this, um, a more of a collective mind thinking, more of a hive mind type of thinking. And that's why uh, socialism is being spread right now, because that appeals to people who are born in the 2nd and 20th. That's very fascinating. And could that be one of the numerological reasons why I believe uh, the Soviet Union is being uh, recreated? Well, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that the powers that be collapsed the Soviet Union on purpose. And um, because if you understand how the law of opposites work, you have to have something to counter something else because America is the world superpower right now and it's fallen because it doesn't have that counterbalance. Um, the, the, the one thing that the Illuminati has above all else is their belief in the law of opposites. Um, a way to prove that is um, how many times have people seen someone fall and they start laughing? Well, that's just the law of opposites working. You know, you get a negative reaction. Um, someone fall, falls, hurts themselves, and someone just starts laughing for you know for no reason. That's the law of opposites. For someone to win, someone has to lose. That's how the game works. Well, that's and interesting that's because in a way that I you were explaining in a different way than I've looked at, but I've always looked at that as well because I always say that God mind always has to be in balance. So if somebody is being deprived of freedom, somebody has a lot of freedom, and as our freedoms have gone downhill, then of course the other countries at least to the outer world as perceived that they have more freedom. So it's very interesting, your explanation. Mm. It's, the law of opposites supersedes the law of attraction, just like numerology supersedes astrology. Interesting. Mm. Gary, is there um, a methodology or uh, a version of numerology that you feel is more accurate than others? For example, in the past, I know people have mentioned Sumerian, Egyptian, ancient Hebrew, all that kind. Pythagorean. Yeah. Which one do you, do you combine them? I, I combine them, but I use the Pythagoras system the most because I think Pythagoras, uh, again, starts with uh, P. P is the 16th letter. Uh, one and six is seven. Anyone, any numerologist who is born on the 7th, 16th, 25th, or who's a, a, a total of seven like Pythagoras was, um, I believe uh, sevens have are just in tune with the numerology and the metaphysical at, at a level that most people can't reach. Not saying it's not possible for other people to reach there. I just think sevens are the best at it um, when it comes to numerology, astrology, and stuff like that. And um, I, I just think the Pythagoras system for the beginners and for the even um, people who are, uh, you know, mid-level numerologists would probably be best. Uh, when you're looking at um, gementria, uh, the study of letters and numbers and combining everything, uh, I, I believe that the Pythagoras system is the best when it comes to, how can I put this, uh, things where other systems like the Sumerian system would be best for living ad objects like dogs and people. You know, the interesting thing, even just listening to you talk, I mean, it's like, I just feel that you just have that within you, that P, that power that helps you cut through all the extraneous things and you get into the heart of the matter. I mean, that's just a phenomenal, another P, to hear you talking like that because I like to hear that kind of clarity in somebody's voice and what they know and what they do. I mean, it's obvious it comes through to me. I've, I've listened to other numerologists in the past, and to be frank, they're boring. Oh, and I, I agree. And they're, yeah, they're boring as hell. I mean, I can go through the one and nine and two and three and four and what that all stands for, but I think what people need to understand is the people in power use numerology 
to their benefit because they want to promote a one world government. And if you look at the big the biggest dates in history, whether it be 9-11 or the Japanese uh, uh, su- uh, earthquake and tsunami that happened on 3-11, which resulted in a nuclear disaster, um, you could see that certain things always happen on, on certain dates. So instead of going around and telling people what the number stand for, I want people to start paying attention to the number 11. Definitely the number 11, but there's not, that's not the only number that we're not to use. Uh, there's number 13. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about the Federal Reserve Banking uh, System before and how those people are nothing but economic terrorists. Yes, but, absolutely. The, but the thing is, you know, people want to, uh, you know, do a little history about what happened with the Titanic in 1912 and then the Federal Reserve came popped up in 1913. Uh, they can. There, there's a connection there. But what, what I want to talk about is the number 13 and how the system is being used by the Federal Reserve. Um, The Federal Reserve System started in 1913. It consists of 12 regional banks and one board of governors in Washington, D.C. So you have a 12 plus one system included in the Federal Reserve. Now we have to look at other systems um, throughout history uh, that revolved around the 12 plus one. When you go to court, you have one judge and 12 jurors. Again, they're going by that 12 and one system. When you look at astrology, you have 12 signs and one sun. Again, you have the 12 and one system. And the most important one, Jesus, and he had 12 apostles. Again, 12 in one system. Uh, So when you look at that, you could see the Illuminati is playing everything according to metaphysical science. And it's going to be difficult for me to explain everything I know within a short amount of time. But I want people to look at this stuff. The number 13 is all over society. It's hidden in plain sight. Uh, Give me an example. Uh, You have a a sports team called the Philadelphia 76ers. 7 and 6 equals 13. You have a sports team that's playing today called the San Francisco 49ers. Four and nine equals 13. Um, you go to the um, biggest fast food corporation in the world, McDonald's. Well, a lot of people are going to be like, well, where's the 13 there? Well, it's very interesting because they use letters. And M just happens to be the 13th letter of the alphabet. So now you have M as in McDonald's, M as in M&M's candy, M as in marathon. If you look at movies, whenever they make up company names, they always have the n- number M highlighted. Um, going back to Hollywood, they like to promote this system. Um, you have, uh, movies called, uh, ladder 49, six days, seven nights, uh, 13 warrior, 13 days, 13 precincts. They like to put that number out there. And again, it also goes back to the 13 bloodline families that you've talked about quite a bit on your show. I had another interesting observation as you were talking, because I wrote down one plus 12. If you write that down, a one plus one is still your eleven so to speak. And then on the outside of the bracket, you have a two, which is kind of what you're talking about. So I don't know if that's significant to you, but that's my observation. Does that mean anything, do you think? Or is it just, you know, whatever? I I, I, don't, I, don't, I like to, you know, there is ways to manipulate numbers, and I like to use it through one system. Either it's on the 11th or the 29th, say the day, or the total number adds up to something. I don't really like saying, say something's uh, the, uh, October the 28th. I don't really count that as a 10, and then 28 together is a 29th. That, that that that's not how numerology works to me, and that's I've interesting. I've experimented a lot of different ways. Um, for instance, one uh, fallacy that a lot of numerologists believe that uh, whenever uh, the new year hits, everyone's in the new year cycle. It means to where I've talked about this, and we're in agreement that that's uh, total baloney. Um, if, if I don't want to mention any names, but if if you hear someone on coast to coast tell you. Your birth cycle cycle starts when the new year hits. There, you know, they're they're totally incorrect. Your birth cycle starts when your birthday hits. Um, that's right, and that's uh, the most important thing in numerology on the year the year basis to see what kind of year cycle you're in. Um, it's gonna uh, like for instance, when people are in one year cycles, that's like a new beginning. They start being more independent, start doing more things. Uh, when people are in eleven year cycles, there that's usually when their outlook on life changes. Um, usually they have a very emotional time of life up and down, uh, three year cycles. People get very bored. Uh, they start thinking outside the box Four year, and obviously this is all brief descriptions Four year cycles. Sure. People have to, um, watch out for the law because the number four stands for law and order. Um, a lot of people who are in four year cycles get pulled over uh, by police all the time and they don't know what the hell's going on. Well, that's what happens when you're in the four year cycle. Um, it doesn't matter if the law is, uh, if, it doesn't matter if the law um, is uh, a, a good law or a bad law. The law is going to follow the law. Um, Five-year cycles basically deal with sex, change, travel. Uh, Six-year cycles deal with home, family, responsibility issues. 
seven year cycles are very interesting because most of the people I talk to when I um, do uh, lectures or do numerology readings are in seven year cycles and seven years year cycles are the uh, are the cycle where you gain the most knowledge. Knowledge is key. Don't chase money in the seven year cycle. It's not going to come to you. Uh, and um, if you're an athlete and you try to work out too hard in the seven year cycle, you will be injured. Um, I've su successfully predicted injuries for many basketball and football players just based off their birthdays. Um, eight year cycle is all about money, karma, nine year cycles, completion. And obviously there's a lot more that goes into it, but that's sure. just a very brief description. No, that's brilliant. But thank you for sharing all that with us. But Gary, what do you think when you see the number 13, what does that number alone have significance numerologically? I believe the number 13 is the number of the energy matrix itself. And, um, when I talk about the energy matrix, I'm talking about the energy that's around everything around us at any moment in time. Um, I believe it, it's difficult to be explain what the energy matrix is, but I believe our souls in this getting off numerology for a second. I believe our souls are basically trapped here and uh, there's no such thing as good karma. There's only bad karma and that bad karma passes down from different lifetimes and it keeps uh, us the same way the Federal Reserve keeps us in debt monetary wise. I believe the um, en energy matrix uh, basically keeps us in debt. Um, on a um energy level, uh, give me an example. And um, and like I said, this is going a little bit off topic, but you know, if I, if I'm going to talk about this on any show, it's going to be this one. Um, whenever when some people some pe some people go to sleep and for 20 minutes they wake up they feel refreshed. Some people go to sleep for 12 hours and they wake up and they feel dead tired. And that's basically because I believe that um when you go to the fourth uh, dimension or you know the dream world, I believe there's entities there that basically suck our energy mm -hmm. and um when you're in there for a short period of time they don't get to suck your energy that much but when you're in there for a long time they can basically play with you and i don't want to go into what i believe these things are you know too much i believe i i think you understand where i'm coming from um Absolutely. but let's just put it this way everything around us consists of energy and to me the number 13 is just the number of the energy matrix itself I agree with you, and I always look at 13 as being a totality number because I always have talked about 12 uh, energy frequencies in the God mind and all of them combined together equal to 13, which is a totality, which is why the Illuminati and others have always used it as a critical number. You know, the Jews have used it as a when a boy becomes a man and, mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so on, and so it is a very, very important number. And yet it was always interesting to me that yet it wasn't one of those master numbers like 11, 22. Oh, I, I consider 13 a submaster number, just like I consider the 28 a submaster number. Um, 11, 11, 22, 33, 44, obviously. Um, but the 13 and the um, 28 are, to me, submaster numbers because the 13, it, while it can't be a master number, obviously, but there's so much energy around that number itself. Um, you know, 13 bloodlines, you know, the, everything, and especially with monetary issues. Monetary issues are very important under the number 13. Again, as I explained how the Federal Reserve has number 13 all over um, the Federal Reserve, and not to mention Ben Bernanke is born on the 13th. So uh -huh. they, they pick their puppets that way, too. Interesting, interesting. Um, well, people have also been asking me your opinion of what books should they read to best understand numerology? Um, wow. I got it. Well, or websites or websites too. That they... Or is it possible? I mean, it sounds like you have really researched, research, research. So it's not something that you just kind of picked up and went with. It's something that no, you really no, dug this through. Is, this is something I've been into since 9-11. Um, yeah. But I got to be honest, there's very few numerologists I can honestly recommend. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with most of them. Um, I, I'll, all I can tell you is, uh, if you're looking for a good numerologist, the best ones are either seven life paths or born in the seventh, 16th or 25th, uh, the, the seven life paths, they, they, they just, they just understand this stuff way better than anyone else. So and, curiously, what, it, what, uh, day is your birthday? I'm born on the seventh. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm not, not, I'm not saying that to be cocky. I'm just telling you. No, that's good. I mean, that's good uh, because you're absolutely one of the best, that, well, if not the best, that Stuart and I have ever come across. I'm so impressed when we yeah. saw your methodology. We looked at your frequency. It's like, wow, this guy knows his stuff. And, and I agree with every single thing that you say. 
exactly. That's Other amazing. Other coaches don't want to take it to this level. They want, you know, I, I, I hear, you know, people calling the other neurologists. They're like, well, here's my birthday. And everything they tell them is positive. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not, see, when, when I do numerology readings for uh, people, I ask them two questions. One, what do you know about numerology? And two, how blunt do you want me to be? Because I'm not going to be like all these other clowns and just tell you what you want to hear. You know, if, if you're in a bad money cycle year, I'm going to tell you. If 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 you have a chance, you know, uh, to do something this year on a monetary basis, I'll tell you where the best dates are. But, you know, you don't expect all good news from a numerologist. If that's what you're doing, you know, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> well, you know, and the same with us. And we talk to people. We, we do our best, as you said, well, how much can they take? And that's what we look at, but- God mind contains all things positive and negative. And if you're not willing to look at both sides, you're not willing to go too far. You, you know, what, what people have to understand is the gang gang cannot survive without each other, just like the Republican and Democratic Party. They're clutches for each other. If they're one, mm-hmm. then the, the other one would, you know, d- dissolve. You have to have both. Um, Absolutely. Like, for instance, um, what some people. How can I put this? Um Let's say World War One never happened, World War Two never happened, and the upcoming World War Three of Iran is never going to happen. You would have a lot more people on the planet. How are you going to feed those people? You know, I, I try to look at it from both sides. You know, you know, everyone calls these people evil, which I, which they are to a point, but I try to look at it from everyone's perspective. And you know, it, it's it's hard to explain, but let's just put it this way: um, evil needs good, and good needs evil. Now, everything serves a purpose. I think that's really what you're trying to explain to people, and that includes their life. You know, whether if it's too easy, people get too complacent. They need to sometimes be jammed around a little bit, myself included, to make us go deeper into our resources and really find out who we are. Going into the immediate, just for a little bit, uh, uh, someone wants to know, uh, what is the symbol 23 mean? Because they see this in every science fiction show. Uh, and in every news program, does 23 mean anything right now? I have a different take on the number 23 than most people. Uh, a lot of people say the number 23 comes out with every equation and stuff like that. The way I look at number 23 is I look at it as, in, and the reason the media promotes it in my mind, is um, the same reason they promote the number 13 except to a lesser scale. Um, the number 13 basically breaks down to one-third, and if you look at it from a decimal standpoint, it breaks down to point. Three, 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 three goes on forever. Uh, to mm-hmm. me, 20, 23 is the same thing as the thirteen. It, 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 it to me, it's not twenty three; it's two thirds, and that's that's that's, that, 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 that's a hidden uh, symbolism the Illuminati can put out there uh, because the tw- if two thirds basically break down to six point six 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 goes on forever. Yeah, yeah. To me, that's yeah. How, that's how they put it out there. Just same thing with McDonald's and the M logo. They don't want to put the thirteen out there, but they they do it, you know, hidden in plain sight. That's fast. Yeah, let me ask you that. So if you've got 13 is a one-third and 23 is a two-third, do you look at 33 as a three-third or a one, or is, again, that erroneous thinking? Um, that, That's a little bit different type of thinking. Uh, to me, uh, 33 is, you know, just we'll, we'll look at it from a religious standpoint. Jesus Christ died when he was 33. Um, look at Islam. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad is born 330. Again, you have 33. Uh, uh, Judaism, King David ruled Jerusalem for 33 years. Um, that's that's a very religious number to me. But in, in all honesty, if you look at the Freemason order, it goes up to 33 degrees, and it does that for a reason because um, that number basically is in sync with how can I put it? Wisdom. And, and so could are, that be though a hidden, you know, like a hidden completion of something? Three over three. I I I, I kind of look at the thirteen and the uh, and the twenty three together being a thirty three to a point, wow. uh, but I, I, to me the number thirty three is the highest you can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I don't think to you a human being can't get any higher than being a uh, fifty five white pack. Uh, the difference is after the year two thousand, um, there's not going to be any more thirty three bo- thirty three white packs born for quite a while. And uh, basically, you're going to be um, having a lot of people who are 11 and 22 like that taking over a show within about 20 to 30 years. They're going to be the only ones allowed to be the visionaries. And the 33s are going to die off uh, probably within because, you know, after 19, 1900s, there there can be no more 33 life paths. It was pure 33 life paths. And the difference and the way I look at the 33 life path is 
for instance, um, say someone is, is born 1-7-1978, that, that adds up to 33 in total. But say someone's born 1-16-1978. If you count the 1 and the 6, it's going to be a 7. But you can also count the 1 and the 6, six as a 16. And if you add that t- total, it's going to be added up to 42. So people who are pure 33s, they their numbers can't add up to anything but 33. But people who are 6s or they add up to 42 or 33, they can go both ways. Uh-huh. That makes sense to you? Okay. Yeah, it does. It makes sense. Yes. So then, Gary, how should people use numerology in their lives? How do they? How should they look at this and adapt it and know what to do on a daily basis? Well, it, it, it basically helps you understand people and why they are the way they are. Um, like, for instance, um, a lot of one life paths are very, very argumentative. They like to argue. They like to be bossy. And what helped me understand is, say I know someone's a, life, a one life path, I'll expect that type of behavior from him, and I won't think anything of it because that's the way they are. Uh, say someone's born on the 7th, and they're an absolute loner, or 16th and 25th, and they like spending time by themselves. Well, the, the average person, they'll be like, well, what the hell is wrong with this guy? How come he never wants to go out, never wants to do anything? But if you are if you understand the way the numbers work in people's birthdays, you'll basically understand, well, this guy's a loner, and he likes to spend time by himself. We'll leave him alone. It basically helps you understand people, and that's just one of the levels. Um, I, I use this stuff for the stock market. I use this stuff, you know, uh, when I look at um, football, basketball teams. I mean, I had the when I started doing this, um, calling up radio shows in 2007, I, I had to dumb it down for the audience. And I have never went that for this show. But, you know, when you talk to the mainstream media, you have to dumb it down for the audience. So what I decided to do was I decided to take what people know best sports. You know, the sheep love their games. And I decided to show how, uh, people how the best athletes are always have the same birthdays. Michael Jordan, the best basketball player of all time, and Jim Brown, the best football player of all time, both have the same birthdays. And I basically thought if basketball player of all time and Jim Brown, the best football player of all time, both have the same birthdays. And I basically thought if I can get people to see numer- how numerology worked from a sports perspective, maybe I can get them to you know, see it as a tool in other ways of life. And I've had a you know limited success with that. You know the the pro franchises didn't want to listen to me. Um, uh, a quick story it was in 2007. I went to talk to the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Indians, and Cleveland Cavs, and I basically told them, uh, "Let let me show you how numerology works." And it, I got all the way to the owner of the Cavs, and he basically offered me a deal. And I said, and basically the deal was, I said so a particular player would get hurt within a certain time period, and he did. He busted his knee. And after that happened, the the owner of the cast still wouldn't talk to me, you know. So I I tried my best to, <laughs> to get people to listen, but you know I I'm telling you this stuff is kitty stuff when it comes to sports numerology. I could help any team win a championship within two three years, any team period. But people have to be open minded to this type of stuff, and they just aren't. Well, you know, I kind of I believe you know when we take a look at this the level that you were trying I'm going to say trying to play on that those people as you said they already know these things. I mean. To me, sports are fixed anyway, and so yeah. things are going to happen, and so they have it, and they don't want you making it better because then you're going to, you know, you're going to mess with the overall game plan, so to speak. So maybe, but, maybe, maybe some of them understand, but I can assure you, a great majority of the people have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. They think well, I'm yeah. numbers, <laughs> right? Well, the people don't, but the owners do, and the people who, you know, are in charge of the owner, they they understand. Oh yeah, kind of okay. stuff, you know, that, that, that level. They because I figured, I basically figured if I can get a team to win a championship, and then I can come out in the media and say I use numerology, well, people will start looking at this type of stuff. And yeah, but... I think it didn't happen. But well, you know, they, I, I they don't want people looking at this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> this is this is too too close to the truth. I mean, they don't want this out there. This no. is why people like Stuart and I have got you on this show, so we can educate the masses, so the masses can understand rather than. The, keep it hidden from them. Well, here, here's a question that's really been coming up a lot lately, and that is, do you believe in changing the spelling of a person's name in yeah. order to alter the yeah. number? Where you yeah. do. Yeah, 100%. But people have to understand one thing. Some numerologists get stuck on the name, um, but you have to understand, uh, you can change your name, you can't change your birthday. Your right, birthday is right. the most important factor in in, in your birth chart. Um, the, the, the name changing, yes, it does have meaning but it's like you know maybe five percent of the total numerology people shouldn't you know focus too much on the name now if you do have a bad name that you know uh that's not you know uh 
compatible with making money, yeah, then then it will be a good th good idea to change it. And you know, there's certain ways to look at names, and also you have to do it on the right day. Um, you know, there's so much that goes into a, a numerology. You have to make sure you do it on the right day. Make sure everything, the vibrational energy, is compatible to you. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is uh, some numbers are just like uh, Chinese astrology signs. They don't mesh well together. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, for instance, one in nine life pack, they they really do not get along too well. Um, I, I, I've seen it, you know, through my, uh, my life, I've just seen people just go after each other. And knowing their birthdays, I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. Um, uh, Kobe Bryant just recently divorced his wife and gave her $75 billion to go away. Well, you know, it, it, it kills me that this guy born in 1978, the year of the horse, could have just went to any basic astrologer. Chinese astrologer and he would have told her and they would have told him not to marry someone born in the year of the rat 1984 but they don't listen so mm -hmm. you know they don't care about this stuff so they get punished in the end uh Jennifer Aniston born 1969 a year of the rooster married Brad Pitt born 1963 a year of the cat cat and rooster complete opposites and when Brad Pitt left her he left her for what another cat Angela Jolie born in 75 so there's a lot to this people really need to I don't think people should get married without an astrologer's or a good astrologer and good numerologist approval. We would definitely save a lot on the divorce rates. Yeah. So, so, so tell us then, like, why do people come to you and they say, Gary, you know, what kind of what kind of work do you do for people? Uh, usually, uh, I would say a good percentage of people when um, they, uh, they um, order readings, they basically ask me, you know, for uh, what's going on in their life, what to expect. Some people ask me when their soulmate's born. And that's possible to find out through numerology and astrology, too. Um, you know, some people, you know, they want to know how the stock market works with numerology. Uh, just a, a quick, um, uh, just a quickly uh, to put this out there. Um, uh, I already mentioned how the uh, stock market fell on uh, um, October 20, October 29, 1929. That was an 11 day because of 29, 2 plus 9 equals 11. Well, five of the seven biggest drops in the stock market's history happened on 11 days uh, for instance the stock market dropped 777 points on september 29th again you had that 29 number and uh the 29 uh, in a lot of ways is more destructive than the 11 when it comes to financial success and material wealth um there, there are certain numbers out there that um, attract money and there's certain numbers that don't attract money and uh I'll give you an example uh the number 28 is the number of wealth not the number of money Eight the number of money, the t number twenty eighth number of wealth. I'll give you an example. Uh, two of the richest people in the world, Carlos Slim and Bill Gates, they're both born on the twenty eighth. Um, go to sports. The two of the richest athletes in the world, just with their contracts and with their endorsements, Tiger Woods and LeBron James, they're both born twelve thirty. One's born eighty nineteen eighty four. One's born nineteen seventy five. They both add up to twenty eight. I've noticed that people who are born on the twenty eighth have a lot of financial success, or if they're not rich, one thing is very certain about them and whenever they need money it comes to them as a matter of fact i won't even play poker with someone born on the 28th it's not that hmm. yeah. hmm. interesting what about the number 18 what does that stand for uh a lot of people would say uh it would it stands for 666 um but i you know uh, i don't look at it that way um hollywood does like to promote that movie um if you notice a lot of movies uh how it would um they, they like to put that uh if you if uh, the locker in like various movies I've noticed is C18 or D18. Um, they like to put that number out there. And to me, the number 18 stands for time itself. Because um, if you take uh, time, there's 60 seconds in a minute, 6 plus 0 is 6. 60 minutes an hour, 6 plus 0 is 6. 24 hours a day, 6 plus 0 is 6. And again, you have 666 six, six is 18, 1 and 8 is 9. Completion. Uh, to me, the number 18. Because I know in. Go ahead. Yeah. In the ancient in the Hebrew religion, eighteen means good luck or or long life. So, it's, I and I, I thought maybe I came from the ancient Egyptian. I I wouldn't. To me, uh, the luckiest number out there is three. That the, to me, it, the, that's what luck is. Um, a lot of people who are eleven life paths had luck in various times of their life, but with the emotional drama they go through, I wouldn't want it. Um, okay. people who are born on this. Let me let me give you an example. Um, seven. Uh, uh, the casinos promote the number seven as good luck. Well, let me tell you something. The number seven is anything but good luck to the players. It's good luck to the casino. Uh, seven mm -hmm. is notorious for gambling. G begins with set. Uh, uh, G is the, uh, it's gambling starts with G. G is the seventh letter alphabet. Again, it goes back to seven. There's 52 cards in the deck. Five plus two again, seven. 
um, because, you know, if you take the word and break it down, numerology, C equals uh, three, A equals one, and so on, it breaks down to a seven. Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to gambling and um, that revolves around the number seven. And let me tell you something. Seven is not lucky. Lucky for the uh -huh. <laughs> they made yeah. um let's see eight, seven, um do you have any more questions about that well no i was just curious um what uh going back to what we talked about earlier when the show began um for 2012 what do you see neurologically as far as the events happening have you looked into that oh of course uh well one of the event i do see happening is an attack on iran and the reason I say that is because um, five stands for a lot of things, sex, death, but it also stands for war. And what, the way you can prove this is um, the last time we invaded a uh, Middle East uh, country was Iraq, and that happened in 2003. 2003 adds up to five, just like 2012 adds up to five in 2012. So I think it's very evident that they're going to attack Iran this year. Um, it's probably going to happen after Iran's birthday on uh, 211. That's when it became an Islamic Republic. And Iran uh, in, uh, after, on 211, 2012 will be in a nine-year cycle, meaning c completion. Uh, mm. So it's very safe. To, I think it's a good bet to say that uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran will be dealt with this year. And the reason they're going to be dealt with is not because of nuclear weapons. No one cares about that stuff. That's just what they tell people uh, to promote war. Uh, the reason they're going to go in there is to protect the dollar. The dollar is a word reserve currency. And um, what happened in 2000 was Saddam switched from selling his oil and the oil for food program the UN was providing him in dollars, and he was switching it to euros. And since uh, 2000, the Euro U.S. Uh, dollar has dropped dramatically in value against other currencies in the world. So what the U.S. do, it went in there and they took him out. Um, a lot of people think the U.S. went in there for oil. Well, that's absolute nonsense um, because the the country that gets most of Iraqi oil today is China. So what what sense does it make for Americans to go in there, you know, take the oil and then give it to the Chinese? It doesn't. What they went in there for is to make sure oil is priced in U.S. dollars. That's all they care about. It's called the petrol dollar system. People really need to... Um, study it because that'll, that'll tell you why we started bombing Gaddafi. Gaddafi started doing the same thing Saddam was. Uh, he started uh, promoting something called a golden dinar and he wanted to sell all his oil and gold. Well, the U.S. wasn't having that and nor were its allies. So, you know, Iran will be targeted this year because not only are they making following the same mistakes um, that uh, Iraq and Libya were doing, but uh, you know, I, I think um, China and Russia are basically telling them we got your back. But when it comes down to it, the Chinese and the Russians ain't got anyone's back. I, I'll tell you right, mm -hmm. right now, being Russian, um, the Russians were saying the same thing about um, us invading Iraq. Well, if you invade Iraq, we're gonna, you know, we're we're gonna put our sand foot in the ground. It's not happening. When it happened, no one cared. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing's gonna happen with Iran. Uh, they think they're gonna get support from Russia. It's not gonna happen. Russia wants high oil prices. And why do they want high oil prices? Because that's their number one export. So if Iran isn't allowed to export oil, guess who's going to benefit? Mm -hmm. Russia. That's, I, it makes that's sense to me. Wait, now the Chinese might get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, they, they might want to flex their muscle a little bit since it's the year of the dragon, which comes up tomorrow, and China is known as a dragon. So they might make some noise. But I don't think they're really going to come defend uh, Iran. I know Russia won't. They might, you know, tell them, they sell them some weapons to make some money. But when it comes down, I don't think they're going to defend Iran. Um, another thing is Ahmadinejad is born in the year of the dog. And we're in the year of the dragon. Uh, he's going to have a tough year. Another, other people who were born in the year of the dog, George W. Bush, uh, Bill Clinton. So I I expect them to be in the news and it's not going to be pleasant. Okay. Interesting. Tell, another tell. thing, uh, another thing um, that happened in 2003 was there were there were blackouts. At least where I was, there were there were a, a lot of blackouts in the U.S. Um, uh, I think it happened from New York to Cleveland, all over the East Coast. There was a big blackout in 2003, and that's the type of things you can expect in 2005. Because I, I whether you're a numerologist, a history buff, or an astrologer, you can always look to history to tell the future. And like I said, a lot of things that happened in 2003 are going to repeat themselves in 2012. Okay. That's yeah. What about Obama? You think he'll be uh, reelected? Yes, I do. And unfortunately, you know, ah. 
Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't. Eleven life paths are usually, or you know, master numbers usually become presidents. Let me give you an example. Um, Barack Hussein Obama is born eight four nineteen sixty one. Add everything up, eight four one nine six one. Add to twenty nine. Two plus nine equals eleven. Uh, Bill Clinton, the last socialist president we had, was born eight nineteen nineteen forty six. Add everything up, adds up to thirty eight. Three plus eight equals eleven. Um, on the Democratic side, when Bush was in power, and Bush is at thirty three. Uh, they had John Kerry running, and John Kerry was born on the 11th. If you look at the Republican ticket in 2008, uh, John McCain is born on the 29th, who was 9 is 11, and Sarah Palin is born on the 11th. And then you go a little bit further um, into uh, Barack Obama's running mate, uh, Joe Biden, who was born 11 uh, 20, 1942, and again, as of the 29th, 2 plus 9 equals 11. So you see how they like to pick their puppets. They, and the reason they, they pick 11s is because 11s have a lot of uh, charisma, and that's something that appeals to the public. Um, unfortunately, none of the Republicans, Rick Sant, uh, except for Rick Santorum, is an eleven. And the reason Rick Santorum isn't going to do good is because he's born fifty-eight, and fifty-eight is the year of the dog. And again, we're in two thousand twelve, which is going to be the year of the dragon. So you can expect Rick Santorum to fade very quickly. Um, I expect Romney to get the nomination because Romney, born three twelve, is going to be in the eleven year cycle in two thousand twelve. So he's going to be in the spotlight, but eventually, I do believe he's going to lose to Obama. Now, what what people have to what people have to understand is that these um, Illuminati types. There's a lot of different factions, and uh, they always have contingency plans: Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. So, what I'm giving you is, you know, from a numerological perspective. But you have to understand these people can change their minds at any time. I'm just curious now. Uh, the Michelle Obama, Obama's wife, has never been really popular. And I see them keeping trying to re remake her over and over in the news, doing this, doing that, you know, shopping at Target, you know, all kinds of things. And what what kind of uh, outlook do you see for her under these circumstances? Michelle Obama is born 117, uh, 1964, adds up to 29, 2 plus 9 is 11. So, again, another uh -huh. spotlight. And uh -huh. um, she's going to be in a year of change. So I'm, I'm expecting around February a lot of bad press to come out about her. Yeah, well, it's still kind of, you know, people are saying bad things about her. They commented on her figure, you know, no matter what she well, well, does. Well, right? she on her figure because she has big arms. And she, uh, 11s are very good athletes. Even the women who are born in the 11 and 29th, they're usually muscular builds and stuff like that. So that's not uncommon. Even You know, well, people they, who are 11s are great athletes, period. They were, they were commenting on something a little bit lower. Her uh, 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 <laughs> career. So. It, 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 it is what it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. And um, someone's been asking about uh, the sounds that have been heard all over the world. You might have seen the videos on that. And supposedly they've all been recorded on the 11th of a month. Do you know anything about that? I will have to look into that, but uh, that does not surprise me one bit. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you know, they, they the people in power, when when it comes to a financial level and, and controlling money, they use number 13. When it comes to putting people fear tactics, and you know, to uh, get people all riled up in, in whatever country, they use it on the 11th. Let me give an example. The Iranian, uh, uh, Iran was um, made into an Islamic Republic on 211. And if you notice, everything the United States does against Iran and everything the, the Iran does against the U.S. always happened on 11 days. Um, on October 11th, 2011, the U.S. said there was a terror plot and the Iranians tried to assassinate um, someone on American soil, a Saudi uh, uh, ambassador. That happened. Yeah. They released that information on the 11th. Uh, a nuclear scientist was killed in Iran on January 11th. You know, they, they like to prop up things on the 11th. And what people have to understand is both sides of the game are controlled by the same people. Yeah, right. yeah, right. that's right. That, 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 now, now, the people on the lower levels, they might know this and they might not, but they all have to play their role. Um, I, it, when people want to ask me what's the best way to understand what's going on, and this might sound a little cheesy, I tell them to look at Star Wars episode, episode 3 and how the Chancellor was controlling the rebels and controlling the Senate. And he made sure the rebels, Al-Qaeda, or you know anything else like that, Iran, was causing trouble so he could get more power. And that's what it comes down to. Uh, there is the war on terror is a joke. And, you, you know, yeah, the, we, it, it, it's it's an absolute joke. They just want to take more rights away from people. Yeah, and, you know, and by promoting uh, fear, 
guess what? More people are more willing to give those rights away. Absolutely. So that's good. And that's why they do things on 9 11 and, and 3 11, Madrid, because they want to put fear in people's hearts. And the, 11, and the number 11 revolves around emotional energy and fears and emotion. So then what number was fear? The fear in 11 too? Fear is in the, fear, uh, any emotion to me is an 11. Okay, great. And I have a question because the Stuart and I, of course, both born in 56. So that, of course, is an 11. How does that play into summer? People who are born in 56, let's say, or an 11 year. Uh, to me, that's 1956. And I, okay. I, do see, I do see what you're talking about, the 11 in the back end. But yeah. I, I don't think it's that strong of an influence. But it's okay. that. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Uh, okay. The curious. strongest influence an 11 can have is for someone to be an 11 life path like Obama. The second mm -hmm. strongest is someone to be born on the 11th or the 29th. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's very possible that the birthday Obama gave isn't even his real birthday. So that might skewer things a little bit, uh, as we might see it, in the future. It's possible, but you know, knowing how the Illuminati work and how they like to pick their 11s, I, I can guarantee you, if that's not his birthday, he is an 11. I can guarantee okay. that. Uh, like for, uh, Bill Clinton was an 11, and the daughter they had, Chelsea Clinton, is an 11. Barack Obama, one of Barack Obama's daughters, is an 11 too. You know, mm -hmm. they they plan this stuff. They, I, I, I know they do. And so, how do the people contact you if they want to find out what's going on in their life? Um, I, the, people can Google my name, Gary the Numbers Guy. I have a website, uh, GaryTheNumbersGuy.net. Um, there's a way for people to uh, request readings and lectures. I've been all over the U.S. giving lectures. I've been to Australia, Canada, and I even speak a few other languages, uh, like Russian. So, if that helps out, um, mm -hmm. and and they can, and I've I've been on um, all the major talk shows, and you know they can go on YouTube. I have a Facebook account, Gary the Numbers Guy, Twitter account. So they, it's not hard to find me. Just put my name in the internet. Fabulous. Uh, Gary, what do you also see happening for the EU this year as far as their financial uh, problems <laughs> and, and the euro and that kind of thing? You know, it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous to me that I've been telling people that uh, the euro is going to be going through a very, very tough time uh, in the first few months. And if, if people have money to invest, trust me on this, just go against the euro. I mean, it's not going to be it's not going to, you know, go down every day, but the euro it, uh, it was born one one nineteen ninety nine, and it was doomed to fail from the very beginning. With that date, um, mm -hmm. Euro right now is in the seven year cycle, and that's not going to you know help it at all. I believe when Greece defaults, that's going to be one big step. But another thing is, um, most of Iranian oil goes to Europe, and right now Europe, the the Americans have convinced the Europeans basically to. Um, uh, uphold sanctions on Iran, so they're going to have to get their oil from somewhere else, and that's going to put a lot more strain on their currency. So th th it doesn't look good, good for any scenario for the euro. Interesting. Well, uh, as far as people are concerned, you know, a person has a, a life path number. Is it possible for them to work uh, differently against that number, or change the their their uh, possible futures and, and it, 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 experience? It's possible. It, it, it's possible for someone going in a river and go with the flow or against the flow. And if you go with the flow, it's a lot easier than if you go against it. So if you're an 11 life path and you're trying to act like a five, well, I mean, good luck to you. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's not going to work out. But is it is it possible to override or overcome a number that maybe is not so good for you? I would, I, I would say, it, like, for instance, there's ways to avoid certain certain numbers like for instance um if you're an eight life path and eight basically deals with karma uh don't do anything bad because karma is going to come bite you in the ass real quick uh you know uh there are different numbers for different things but it's hard for me to explain everything i know very quickly um some numbers don't get along with others some do uh the best way if someone doesn't like their birthday i mean too bad they can't do anything about it the, the best thing they could do is uh, talk to a consultant numerologist and maybe try to change their name so it has a little bit um, of a better vibe uh, compared to their birthday. Like, say someone has a birthday that adds up to a one and they have a name that adds up to a nine. Well, nines and ones don't go very well together, so you might want to do what you can to change that. So the life path number, just the, the month, the date, and the year they're born, that's they get the life path, or is it more complicated than that? No, life, day, year. And the life path is the most important number. The second most mm -hmm. important number is the day you're born on. 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. I'm assuming when people come to you and you explain all this and you lay it out for them. And no, I, 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 go, I go into detail uh, about the numerology, Chinese astrology, and, you know, people ask me for different things. Some uh, uh, some people ask me, well, they they give me dates and like, am I compatible with this person? Am I compatible with this person? Some people we want to talk about finances. You know, it, it, it's whatever uh, you want to talk about. Um, I, 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 If I can't tell you something, I'll tell you off top. That I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, uh, Gary, are there places in the world or in the U.S. Uh, that numerologically this year are in trouble seismologically or in any other way? I would have to look into that. And you have to take the, like, say, a city, a city, uh, let's say, like, Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm from, um, it, it's born, like, say, for example, it's born 12 one Well, you're going to have to see the type of year that your cycle is in, um, and that could tell you if it's going to be beneficial or not. Um, if people have to understand that it doesn't matter if it's a thing or a person. You could break it down with the numbers. And what people have to understand is the numeral the numbers don't have any powers themselves, okay? I'm not trying to tell you this is some kind of magic or you know what they tell you in the movie basically the numbers are in tune with the vibrational energy around us that 99.9 percent .9 of the public can't see and the way you can read those um the energies and the vibrations are through the numbers because they're in tune with them yeah, that's fabulous and the thing that i always figured out a long time ago is that everything can be described as a mathematical equation including people and if you get that, then you understand that everything is really based upon, as we talk about, color, tone, and archetype, or shape. Shape and shape can be described by numbers. So all of those things is part of the reality of the, the beginning of creation when you take it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's everything I always tell people, men why, women why, numbers never why. Yeah, that's good. That's very good, very good. And in the last few minutes we have, is there anything in particular that you want to be sure and get out, a message that you feel you need to get out to people? Or any events that you might have coming up? Well, um, and for events um, I've coming up, people can just go to my website, GaryTheNumbersGuy.net. But one thing I, I think people need to be very aware of is, uh, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world this year. I mean, we might have some uh, solar flares and knock out power, and there might be a lot more blackouts or, you know, it might have communication disruptions. Um, but it's not going to be the end of the world. It might be the end of the world as we know it, but not the end of the world. Don't believe that Hollywood nonsense. Um but I think it's very important for people to understand that the monetary system is going to change within the next 18 months. And I believe 2013 is the key year where you can expect monetary changes. Um, it, it, I, I think it's very important for people to have a little gold, a little silver, a little um, uh, euro, not in the, not the euro, excuse me, um, some British pounds, some American dollars, and diversify because there's going to be point in this year where it's going to look like uh, the, the, everything's going to unravel. And I, they, and you have to understand, the powers that be, they can demonetize gold and silver anytime they want. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't think that's mm -hmm. a safe haven. Um, I, I think people need to put their assets in a whole bunch of different things so when what comes does come, they won't, be, they won't lose everything. I think that's very important because, as I talked about before, the Federal Reserve was founded in 1913, I believe the charter of the Federal Reserve is going to run out in 2013. And the reason I believe this is um, John F. Kennedy, who was born on the 29th, uh, another 11, um, he basically tried to go after the Fed, and the Fed killed him. And mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan started talking bad about the Fed in 1981. He got shot. So why is it the two presidents w were talking about the Fed and they get dealt with, but now we have a guy like Ron Paul and he can say anything about the Fed he wants and nothing happens to him. Well, the reason this is is because the the Fed is about to run out of steam. They want to bring down the Fed to bring down the American dollar after the euro goes, obviously. Uh, and out of the Federal Reserve's ashes will come a new one world currency. I, I, and the way they're going to the carrot they're going to put on a stick for people is they're going to tell them we're going to forgive all debt. That's how they're going to come at people. We're going to forget all debt. All you have to do is start using this world, this new world currency. And I always tell people, I understand the Federal Reserve is a bunch of economic terrorists. But sometimes it's better to deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't. Because I can uh -huh. assure people what comes after the Fed will make the Fed look like a picnic. <laughs> Guarantee that one. Definitely. Although that forgiving all debt sounds pretty good. And all these Ron Paul drones out there, and I'm a conservative by nature, 
And but I, I, I see right through the left right paradigm. And Ron Paul, he is basically um the new Obama. He's he 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 he's trying to give the people hope and change and all this other stuff. But the reason Ron Paul is being promoted right now is by the elites themselves. So he tells people about the Fed so that people get all riled up and they basically eventually destroy the system. See, they, they, the games these people play is absolutely astonishing because you're if you read about the Fed, you're like, oh, my God, these guys are horrible, which they are. But people have to understand that what comes after the Fed is going to be a lot worse. Yeah, and I think too, what you said is really good right in the beginning. You said it's the same people manipulating both sides. So, you know, and that's kind of what, when we found out about Ron Paul, they go, oh my God, I can't believe you're not for Ron Paul. Well, you know, it's all the same. If you're for anybody, you're basically voting for these global handlers. And we want, you know, we're not, we're not for the global handlers. We're for the people. Well, uh, Gary, believe it or not, we just have a few seconds left. So I just okay. wanted to thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm hoping you're going to come back again because we have so much more to talk to you about. Fascinating. Thank you, Gary. And again, Gary, the numbers net, correct? Gary, the numbers guy.net. Find me on Facebook or on YouTube. I, I, I put out videos all the time. And um, and again, thank you very much for having me on, on your show. And it's a lot better to talk to people who actually understand about this stuff than, you know, go on going back or, you know, and just get beat up all the time. <laughs> well, thank you. And so long, everybody. And tune in to expansions.com for more news and information. Goodbye. That's the nerds. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid.